Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I've got this La Mancha guitar made in Middle Tennessee. It was made by Jerry Roberts and it was uh, made pretty good except that the action's kind of kind of high right here in the middle and it's uh, 9 64ths at the uh, 12th fret which was isn't that you know bad actually but um, what the deal is with the neck and I'll show you is that it takes a swoop upward here um, if I put a straight edge on the wood Gee, yeah, that's the wrong scale. I'll show you the difference between this guitar and what a Les Paul neck looks like. This one here is a long scale. And um, I'll take a feeler gauge of 14 thousandths of an inch and put it right under the second fret. Above the second and third fret, it shouldn't be like this. It should be more like three times less than that. You know, this it's like this first fret is up way higher than it's supposed to be. I mean, 14 thousandths goes right in. On a Les Paul, you can get like a 5 thousandths maybe. And uh, yeah, obviously the gap gets real big, but as I go up, it's pretty much the same. Uh, it starts going down a little bit right here. So that's telling me that the, the fretboard is pretty straight in this area but then it takes a curve up and my visual gets the same thing. And then once we get up past the body joint, it's pretty tight right there. And then it gets, it's a little less. So um, there's a little bit of fall away, which is good. I think there's a little fall away. Maybe not as much as I wanted it to be. Maybe it was this side shows a little fall away. So anyways, we're going to take out, take the strings off, pull these frets, and see how easily they pull out. But we definitely want to sand down this portion of the wood and uh, get this uh, fretboard down a little bit, maybe a millimeter um, of wood off the top of the rosewood here on this. Maybe heat it up, bend it a little bit, and then compression fretting. That's when you take the frets out and you crimp them and you put hammer them back in and it kind of expands the board to more a level pretty much of a flat shape I want to see what the notched straight edge is showing me here because this notched straight edge takes the uh, first fret out of the equation and that way I can see what kind of relief we have in the neck and it was pretty much the same with the strings on it was about seven thousandths of an inch uh, here in the middle which is which is perfect but see it's such a different thing when you put the first fret in the equation you know you're getting like I was getting like 20 thousandths of an inch um, so we'll start taking down some frets here take them out I was telling the customer that uh, it might be in this case that the fret slots were far too wide for the fret tang. And that fret came out so easily. I think we might be correct. Always want to uh, mark the, the base side of each fret so that I know which way to reinstall them. Not that it's really going to matter that much. But um, I want to keep track of the frets. This is the sixth fret, so I'll put it there. And then I'll continue to pull. Um, I usually can't pull frets this easy. I mean, that's, that's a little too easy, guys. Shouldn't be this easy. So we definitely have a compression problem. These tangs are not providing enough support. They're not stiffening that neck and keeping that neck in a nice straight position. The frets are allowing, well these loose frets are allowing the, the wood to react to the string tension and uh, deform. So now that that's clear and we get all these frets out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit. One millimeter. I always start with one millimeter. I think it's a good way to gauge things most of the time. The first thing I was worried about was whether there was a bunch of glue in the slots that I'd have to clean out 
and good news there's no glue in the slots and then the second thing I was worried about is whether the nut was glued in real bad or not and uh, poking around this side I saw that the really only thing holding it there was the lacquer I mean um, it's probably a water-based or catalyzed finish of some kind it's it's not lacquer it's too soft to be lacquer and it has a there's a little crack on the side maybe you'll see it I'll show you how to score around that lacquer uh, or the, we'll just call it a clear finish basically so I got it in the total vice You see, as I push on the nut, it's kind of moving around already. And it came right out. More good news, guys. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to have to be doing too much sanding because I did this little experiment here where I put a block at the 12th fret and a block at the 1st fret and I clamped the neck in the middle at the 6th fret to see what it's going to look like when it straightens out. Turns out if I can get good compression in here um, and a little bit of fish glue in each slot put this clamp back on and, and let it cure in this shape I will not really have to do any sanding on this board. Okay, I switched sides so you can see we came down a little with the camera so you can get right at eye level to see that that board is not flipping up like it was before. We just need these frets to hold it in this shape. And uh, yeah, it's going to spring back up when I take that clamp off of there and I clamp it back down. So I let off on the clamp and I push down on the clamp. I'm going to try to get it where there's a little bit of a uh, a back bow up here and clamp it into a slight back bow and then when I undo the clamp in a few days it'll probably go into a little bit more of a up bow. So right here I've got the bottle of fish glue with the hot water running over in the sink and it's just at a trickle and I'll uh, leave this running while I clean out the fret slots and I'll transfer the uh, fish glue into this syringe and it should make for a really quick clean and easy uh, fret reinstall. So we'll, we'll go crimp some frets and uh, clean some slots while this runs. We just need a little trickle. All right, this is going real fast because there's basically nothing in these slots. They're real clean and they're real deep. The other problem you, you can get with a guitar man, when you manufacture a guitar, and this can happen with all brands, of not just the homemade guitars but they can uh, cut the slots too deep. Yeah, these suckers are so deep, oh my God. Now last week I was watching Ted Woodford and he was working on this guitar that became a nightmare, he ended up cracking the neck. He was supposed to do part two for this week, but I saw something where he was working on a Strat and I haven't watched it yet. Maybe he tells us he threw the guitar away. But the, while I was watching episode one on the destroyed guitar, he never took the frets out. To see, I mean, he 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 explained that the frets were slots were way deeper than the frets that that they needed to be for the frets, and he made a point of that, but he never took the frets out to fill in those voids, and reinstall them and clamp it into the back bow with fish glue, to get it to you know, and he had a horrible relief in it, it was like fourteen thousandths of an inch or something, which I would never be able to play on, so. We want to get the relief low. We don't want to leave the relief at 14 thousandths of an inch and just start doing a neck reset or taking the fretboard off before we even take the frets out. I think Ted was having a little COVID fog or something because he was sick two weeks before and I, I was sick a week before he got sick and uh, it'll fuck with you. Next, we want to look at my fret crimping technology. Now these crimpers important that you install the crown down here in this underneath kind of thing see you don't want the crown up, out here you want the crown inside the jaws and then you want to give it a, just a little squeeze see that crimpage 
we're going to give it, we're going to squeeze it in three spots. And what happens when you crimp it is uh, it puts the fret into a back bow. It, like if, if the, if the fret had a radius on it, it'd probably be more like a, if it was concave, it'd probably be more convex or vice versa, I guess. Um, this one didn't seem to move too much. It seems pretty flat still. Let's go pound it in and see what happens. Uh, for added insurance that the frets stay in and don't come wandering out later, I like to clean the slots with naphtha and paper towels. Now before I crimp all uh, nine of the frets, or all tw uh, 11 of the frets, I'm going to test this one crimped fret. It's just to get a feel for how how my crimping, how much I crimped it. See, I can crimp it less or I can crimp it more. I have total control over the situation right now. How much glue is it gonna to take to fill that deep slot? It's kind of a guess. But I'll do the first one and we'll get a feel for that as well. Or I could take take a guitar string and kind of push the glue down it's pretty full, filled up Wow all right so I've got a little cup of hot water over here with my syringe in it keeping that glue warm okay I did the chamfer I uncrimped it a bit, and so I've got a plan. I'm gonna chamfer top edge of each fret slot, re-clean them. I'm going to crimp each fret ever so slightly. Not anywhere near as much pressure as I just did with that first test fret. As a matter of fact, I probably only want to crimp as I go. I think I'll do kind of like every other fret. Okay, I crimped this one ever so slightly. <clears throat> and now I'm going to do the seventh fret. So some luthiers have it down. I can't remember. If you want to look up compression fretting and you don't have Dan Earlywine's book, uh, Fret Work Step by Step, I think you can. Google compression fretting Hayes guitars. I think Jerry Hayes wrote an article on it and they say to do the third fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, ninth fret. There's a certain order that you should do it. So I've got the hot water. I'm gonna get me a little hot water on a paper towel and clean up all that excess. That was a lot of excess coming off of that. I'll get two more frets in and then I'll look at the, the straightness of the neck. Guys, I'm not too crazy about this fret wire. You can totally just bend it with your fingers. I'm, I'm gonna do fret number 10. And when I'm crimping them in, I don't need to put much pressure at all on them. Just barely squeeze it. Barely squeeze that tool. OK, 
Okay, I checked it for straightness after four frets and it was still uh, in an up bow. It still had the same relief, so the frets alone aren't really pushing it into the shape that I want. So I'm going to continue crimping all the frets as I go. Okay, all the frets are in. I'm going to put my clamp on. Got my little hockey puck under there to protect. Make sure I don't dent up the wood too much. And I'll clamp her down until she's in a back bow. And uh, I'll leave it in this back bow for three or four days to cure. Okay, there's the back bow. I could give her one more crank maybe. But uh, frets are in and it's clamped. I can go set it over in another room or somewhere and work on some other stuff for a few days. Remember the problem before when I put the 12 inch straight edge on the uh, fretboard, on the frets, that I could get a uh, 5 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge in between the straight edge and the second fret. Well right now this is a 2 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and it does not go through. It goes through on the third fret, but on the second fret we're looking good. We're looking dead flat right here and a little bit of relief coming in you know, at the third fret through the twelfth. Um, we're looking a lot better already. I'm going to put the strings back on. If everything frets well, I'll recrown and polish these frets and we'll be done with the job. Let's give this thing a listen. I think it sounds pretty good.